Okay, weekend ranchers, we're getting ready to head out to the ranch. But before we do, on this Saturday morning, we had this huge rainstorm move through. It says beautiful and wet. Anyways, we wanted to check in on our hennies and see what's been going on with them. So here's your chicken update. So our hennies still just live in the chicken tractor, the big run. They do have a perch to rest on. Again, we're down to five birds. They're trying to dry off a little bit. They got pretty wet from last night. Hi. Hi, Catherine. And how much has them rotating over the grass in the backyard to keep pecking things up and getting good nutrition out of our grass. And our grass is looking really good. These are the areas they've been. Hard to tell they were there. One of the other nice things we've had them do is from the piggy compost, we had pulled that stuff out right here and let them really peck through that and work it down. We have the big pile with a few branches on top, just helping with some more organic matter as it breaks down. Um, we broke down the piggy pen, broken down into just the boards, trying to dry out and air out and make sure there's nothing growing on there. So we're encouraging Talmadge to give the hens more time on the compost. We'll see if he does that more or not, but we think that that definitely helps things break down. Until Talmadge gets his coop together to make sure our hens are protected at night, he just puts them in this little animal cage to keep them safe and then lets them out. So they get taken care of every night and every morning. Mari's got some vegetables and fruits to give the little piggies a little treat. And they're excited, they're running all over. Well, now they all. Anyway, here's the little one. And she ran away. Now here comes another one. He's gonna come through. There's another one. And, oh, one's coming through the middle. Almost done. Now I can do the side. Just the shade. Smells some. Oh. <laughs> They're coming for you. They like you, Mommy. Yeah. I'm good. Watch out, it's a good job. It's been three days, and this blue barrel is just under a half. It's a little over a third left. And this black one is just under two, th or yeah, it's about two thirds full. Which means we still have 50 gallons left. Which isn't bad, but the, these nipples I just are frustrating. The other thing we noticed our piggies are digging and digging more and are finding ways to explore. I don't think they've gotten out, but we're gonna have to find a way to shore that up. So I think we're gonna get some two by sixes, but on both sides of this post. We've got little piggy digging, which isn't good. So we'll find something to do, but we're gonna fill up all this water and then uh, seal these guys off and then start working on everything else. These extra wire bits that we haven't cut off yet. So I, like down here, and this one, I'm going to stick those down to try and deter little piggies. Okay, so the board's screwed in, so let's see what it ends up looking like. So that covered up a bunch of their hole. We're still gonna put something here to kind of fill that one gap, but hopefully that'll be a lot less enticing to try and keep scavenging under it. 
Okay, after investigating this side, they really hadn't dug a big enough hole, so we're gonna leave the board down here as a deterrent. They won't be able to lift it out of their way, so it should do our job. And we're gonna keep it covered up with the tarps that also helps deter them actually escaping. Again, this is really just a rooting issue and they haven't gotten it out. Um, we did refill the barrels, so the barrels are full again. And we're gonna go the week and we're gonna see what's it like, how do the piggies do, how's the water. We can't keep coming every every Wednesday. It's time to see if we can get our system to work. So wish us luck. Hopefully the pigs do good. So we have the gaucho wire up on the fence. At least this one line. We haven't seen anything else, so we're gonna check it out. So here it is on the end post, all wrapped and tied, all the way down. And then he's got some staples as we go along. And then the T-post, right, he ran out of staples, so we brought some more staples this week. Um, so we'll have some, maybe some fishing touches on this, but the lines are on. He put up seven strands, so seven strand gaucho wire fence. It's about six feet tall. Um, a concern I have with doing the barbed wire and not a, a woven wire is the bottom. And some of these portions at the very bottom seem to be pretty high off the ground. You'll see it as we kind of go along this fence that a baby buffalo could squeeze under there, especially if they have a whole foot um, of room. So um, my concern is, is the buffalo escaping? Um, I think that we could probably put them some lower on some of these T-posts, but we may have them put an extra line in just at the bottom to make sure. So like at the bottom of this one, that's about a foot off the ground right here. Um, it's just a little too far. It almost seems like it's more spacing than what you see up on the rest of the T-post. Yeah, really so. There we go. So now you can see the fence line all the way down. So let's go see what else we can find out. Yes, yeah, so this is 13 inches off the ground. 13 inches. This is, this is way too high in my opinion. That a buffalo, if they come over here and just want to sleep in the shade or lay up on the side, they're going to get in on this thing. Yeah, that's 16 inches. Okay, because I was going to say, because maybe it's like, oh, well, it's not tied off. But no, it is at that height. That's 18 inches. This is way too high. I mean, these are only, these are about nine, nine and a half, nine and a half, almost 10, which is fine up top, but nine. I mean, there's really high. He does that post. Looks like he nails it. He doesn't put the pin going through. Huh. And then he uses a series of like eight staples, three staples up here. And two down there. And then he just twists and ties it. The other thing, you can see the, the drop in elevation right up in here and he's supposed to put a gate right where I'm standing and so I think he's putting the gate right here I don't want to have a gate on that drop this this land is more sloped and this land is more flat I was gonna come by with that fence and take it where you see that bush tipped over when that bush is tipped over, stop right there, and then go down on this left-hand side, and that land is a lot more flat. So when I put the gate up, I'm not having to put the gate cockeyed, or I have gaps underneath it. Anyway, I'll we'll have to talk to him and see what modifications he can make, but these guys aren't in far enough, in my opinion. We've been putting them in over three feet, almost four feet in. This guy's barely three feet, if that. At best, it's two and a half feet. It's seven feet, seven inches into the ground. That's seven and a half feet. So these aren't very deep. They're a foot and a half shy. So I'll have to talk to him about this. When we have an H brace, we put this 
wire across it to keep it square and so when any pressure is going to be pulling this way because here's here's our actual corner post when you have these you put this line i don't know what the technical term is right now whatever but you put the line in and we use that ratchet strainer the other option is to put something like this where you just wrap and wrap and wrap and it tightens everything gets it all universally tight and then you're wrapping it this way so when you let go it just tensions up against the post um, a lot of people do this it's not necessarily horrible the, the, the problem that I'm seeing here is this isn't secured and so what can happen is an animal come by bump it a kid come by bump it if somebody moves it or plays with it and that thing shoots over and it starts to unwind you've lost all your tension and people can get injured doing this so this one isn't even secure this one isn't even secured but we have a nail to stop it going one direction I mean this now this slides off now you've got a nail you're going to deal with so I'm not a fan of this either like that, that just to me doesn't it just doesn't cut it you know I mean these are tight and all um, but it just it isn't exactly what you want because you're not the one doing it I understand that um, there's some certain certain things I think are common sense that I would not thought to have seen and I, I guess ultimately what you get what you pay for right we got our first quote for fencing and it was like hundred and thirty thousand dollars now it was more than just these two pastures but that is just ridiculously insane so this might cost me all the way around this pasture and the next one over six and seven it might cost me five or six maybe seven thousand for him to do it and so it's a lot cheaper I mean it's one-tenth the cost of really or more but I may have him finish six because half this stuff is already ran he just needs to put in t-posts on the barbed wire that's existing I may have him just finish six and call it quits anyway it saved me from doing it we're under a time crunch I get that let him finish the job but yeah let's move on to something else it is a 16 foot opening which is Again, these are all two and a half feet. So what we've done on the far side over here is there's existing barbed wire already. And I think what he's done is he's probably just tightened that up a little bit. Um, and it looks like that's all he's done. And I think it's just mainly he's focused from here down this way and he's put other T posts that are higher so he's just reusing the old T posts from the fence with the old barbed wire and he's just adding these other ones to try and put it higher so these clips here are on the back side so the T posts are flipped because these guys put the fence in and they're trying to keep animals out here out from coming in so when they push they're pushing wholly on the t-post not the clip so that doesn't work on our side so here you can see he put the t-post flipped it back and he's got the clips around so when you push that direction you push against the t-post and then he latched all of these other barbed wire to our brand new post too so he's just blended these which is fine you know we're we figured that's what he's going to do but we have a five strand and then an extra two up top just to give us some height and it looks like he's gone all the way down the line down in that little creek area and coming back up and we're gonna go check out how much he's actually gotten done of it we found the end of the line here and this is where he stopped this is the corner post um, just down the way from the creek that we were just at some things that you'll notice what he did here because he had to tear out this corner post um, he had to reattach all the barbed wire so if we go forward here if you can see there's where he uh, blended the two barbed wire he did a I don't remember what the ties are but um, he did a tie and so he, he blended them together and, and got it tight so which it, people do so it's not like that's bad but um, 
So yeah, so it looks like this part is pretty good. Um, let's just see if we can maybe work the creek now. Here you can see the water actually coming off this this edge. I, you know, this is a big, big hole. And I wonder if this is for like a huge amount of runoff from just the fact that we're in this six acre enclosed area and it all centrally drops to this path spot right here. But we're gonna see if we can keep going and find out where this is at. Too fat, I can't stretch. That was an awkward angle. <laughs> Let's not do that again. It's my better side. It's your crotch. Ooh, that's actually nice cool water too. I really wonder if we could just make a big old puddle up here, a pool, and have that be a water source. Not knowing if this is seasonal or not, uh, and or how much it's influenced by all the runoff that comes down. I don't know if this is, uh, if it's safe to just rely on this water only. But um, if you can see, we are probably 30, 40 feet below the ridge all the way around us. Yeah. Nothing ever shows up on camera. It's slow. <laughs> no, you cannot tell. It's crazy how much all of this six acres kind of goes to here, but this is still flowing. So let's see if we've got a creek. It's been flowing for two weeks before it even rained. So let's see if we go. All right, so we're at the very head of this long creek bed and like seriously can't see anything else up the line. It looks all dry. So this was kind of where it looked the first spot dry. So we decided to see if we can investigate with the um, shovel and find a source. And a bunch of this dead stuff on top is from when we mulched, not all of it obviously, but from spitting all that stuff everywhere, we do have kind of this layer of uh, dead mulching. Might be right in here. Huh. I bet it looks like a creek so much farther up is that's just where the line of runoff comes down. Yeah. So question to all of you guys, do you think it's really worth it? Our fence line is about a hundred feet up the hill, so that pasture wouldn't have access unless we opened the gate and allowed them to come in and maybe just made this its own separate area that was shared between the two. But um, I think initially we're gonna just get some containers, pumps, and start doing stuff up there with fresh water. And then I'd like your feedback. Any suggestions you have, do you, is it worth to get like a spring creek kind of a feel um, for a lake or, or is it just not worth all this excavation? I mean, cause it's gonna have to excavate, flatten out, and then dam it up and, and put all that clay in it. So I don't know. Let me know. Oh, All right, so just been digging here. for like seriously one minute, if that, just moving some of this top debris. It's like puddled down there. It stinks. It stinks though, because I think all that mulching is just sitting in there soaking nasties. We've excavated this out just a little bit. What we're trying to do is see if there's any water flow right here at the base of the tree is a pool of water but right here there is no water and so we're thinking this is the start we don't see anything coming into this but I don't know if you can see it in the picture if you see in the glare there is flow outside of this spot but this pool stays the same, so we're thinking this spot is it. Now, again, I don't know how much of the rain right now was leaching in through the sandy soil kind of into this spot, so I think we need to give it about a week and see kind of what we come up with some other time. Hi, bug. Hi. Holding the thorn line. Yep. All right, and we'll kind of contemplate what to do, but give us your suggestions, what you think we should do. But you can kind of see it running, which is good news. 
So we came up to Steve's here to look at his watering system. He has a concrete waterer and I, I, I'm gonna have a 5,000 gallon water tank that we're gonna have to fill up. And um, I wanna make sure that it's hooked up right. You know, we don't have a lot of time to wait. So um, it looks like, you know, he just uses a hose. So he has a pump or this well. Uh, the well is where he gets all of his water. Instead of a well, I'm just gonna have a 5,000 gallon water tank. Um, <clears throat> then we're gonna try and get a pump and we're going to pump it into a water pressure tank that pressurizes it just like you would for a normal house on a well system. A well system, um, and then have that feed to the water trough. And it uses a garden hose. At least he's using a garden hose. So initially, I think that's what we're just going to do is use a garden hose. Um, and hopefully the system is pretty good. So that's why we went to go visit Steve. And while there, of course, you just want to go see your bowls and they look pretty good. Um, so. That's why. Now, to kind of let you know, I did talk to the fence guy, uh, Billy. So before we left, Billy came by and we talked. Some of those fence posts, I guess he said he's hitting some really hard rock like concrete about two and a half feet down. That's what Nathan and I were hitting a couple weeks ago, which is why we gave up and said, forget this. Um, he's like, oh, did you want it three feet? And I said, at least three feet, like every other post. So he's gonna try and get them lower. He probably won't do anything with the ones he's already got set. Um, he is gonna put one more strand of barbed wire, probably five inches off the ground. At least that's what he should be doing. Um, and then that gate issue, where we were talking about the gate, he has no intention of putting a gate there. So it just means, We'll, we'll just have to use the top gate by the pavilion. And I'm not gonna sweat it right now, just get it done. But he's gonna finish this pasture up. He's gonna buy the materials he needs and he will then just let us know how much it was and we'll reimburse him. But so far, progress is good. We'll just see how this goes and, and go through it. Um, you know, just, it, it, it's never done the way you want it unless you're the one to do it. Um, it's, it's acceptable, I guess, what he's doing. If it's not, we'll find out, but he's done fences. Maybe it's good, you know, just we'll go with it and try and make improvements as we're going along. So anyway, that's it for us. We're heading back home. Um, keep liking and subscribing. Seriously though, like subscriptions on the YouTube channel help huge. If you have not subscribed, we really would appreciate it. You know, like it and everything. I mean, it just, it really helps. Um, you know, and all it does is just gives you a note whenever we post something, so that's all. Anyway, like and subscribe, we'll talk to you next week, and we'll have a visitor next week, and kind of hopefully have some more information for you. All right, take care.